Back in the United States, several anti-war groups have formed a new coalition to oppose the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and other U.S. military actions abroad. The group End U.S. Wars held an inaugural rally Saturday in front of the White House. Democratic Congress member Dennis Kucinich was among those to address the crowd. We have money for war, but not for jobs. Jeez. Money for war, but not for health care. Money for war, but not for education. Money for war, but not for housing. Money for war, but not for peace. Yeah. Billions for bailouts, bonuses, and bombs. The Supreme Court has refused to review a lower court's dismissal of a suit against former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld and other top U.S. military officials for the torture of four former Guantanamo prisoners. Last year, the D.C. Circuit Court ruled the four have no constitutional rights and don't qualify as persons under the law. The Obama administration had asked the Supreme Court to reject the appeal. The lead attorney in Case, Eric Lewis said, quote, the final word on whether these men had a right not to be tortured or a right to practice their religion free from abuse is that they did not. Future prospective torturers can now draw comfort, he said. And a Canadian activist has been barred from entering the United States to speak out against the upcoming Winter Olympics in Vancouver. On Friday, Marla Wren of the Olympic Resistance Network said she was detained and interrogated for six hours before being returned to Canada. When I arrived at the American border, I was picked out of the line before I reached my turn to step up to the wicket, um, and I was questioned uh, specifically about what I was going to be doing in Portland, and then uh, questioned quite extensively about who I knew there and the purposes of why I was going to be there. Um, I was subsequently refused entry uh, based on the fact that I haven't been employed um, uh, for the last three months. Local activists have criticized the Vancouver Olympics for displacing and sidelining low-income residents, as well as infringing on Indigenous land rights. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. This is Climate Countdown. We are watching you. You know what to do. The number has been set. We are seeing a redefinition of environmentalism. Resist, mobilize, transform. Well, I think the fact that we're talking here about very significant money. We are suffering the most, but we have not caused the problem at the least. So for us, it's a justice issue. It is also a human rights issue. watching you. You Most speakers who took part in the discussion today emphasize the importance of the Kyoto Protocol. 1.5 degrees, that's enough for our little islands in the Pacific to drown. So people, wake up. Climate change is real. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's a hard rain. We're going to fall. This is Climate Countdown. Bob Dylan's A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall is the unofficial anthem of the COP15 conference here in Copenhagen. Yes, this is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. And we're broadcasting from inside the Bella Center, what some might call the Bella of the Beast, in this exclusive two-week series on the Climate Summit. Negotiations are back on track here at the summit after a walkout yesterday by developing countries highlighted the growing divide between rich and poor nations. African delegates led the walkout, accusing the U.N. chair of the conference of trying to kill the Kyoto Protocol by merging it with a separate negotiating track on a new agreement. Kyoto is the only legal treaty that requires rich nations to slash their greenhouse gas emissions. In a victory for developing nations, it was agreed after several hours that informal talks would proceed along two parallel tracks. Meanwhile, a group of more than 50 non-governmental organizations are accusing the U.N. of undemocratic behavior for not letting in thousands of NGO representatives into the Bella Center to attend the summit. On Monday, thousands of people already registered to attend waited in line for hours before being turned away. The number of NGO representatives allowed in will be limited to 7,000 on Tuesday and Wednesday, falling to 1,000 on Thursday and just 90 on Friday. 
as more than 110 heads of state arrive for the talks. Meanwhile, outside the Bella Center, Danish police are intensifying their crackdown on climate justice activists. Late last night, riot police raided Copenhagen's autonomous community of Christiania as it played host to a party organized by protest groups. More than 200 people were reportedly arrested. This follows the arrest of some 1,200 people over the weekend. That was amidst a march of 100,000 people in Copenhagen.